Hello wonderful people oh, my people now welcome back oh. anyway I know and I not say that draw case the court they accepted it and tabled it as the evidence even though they said because the only witness that the APC people called who is Mr. Akpayemi admitted that yes Tinibu forfeited 450,000 US dollars but it was a drug case uh, issue that it wasn't a crime like a criminal crime See, be, being that uh, Tinibu was not convicted in a, in America for it but the court accepted this and they tabled it and they have it as evidence now my own now is should a president of a country be involved in a drug case whether being convicted for it or not and i can believe that this is the reason why mr peter will be also petition him on this because you being the leader the number one in a country and you have a criminal case that has to do with drugs then i don't know how do you think that other people aside in foreign investors like international bodies will be looking at the masses the citizens from such a country but anyway not before my mouth and i hear them but it is open the witness that they called is the one who admitted that yes he forfeited this huge amount on drug case even though he was not a uh, um, convicted for it if they, according to them it's not a criminal case i beg which drug case is not criminal mm, abi have we not have many issues on this in nigeria as well anyway let me leave you guys to watch the video and hear the news hello very good morning to you this is kakaki social i'm rena obozege thank you so much for joining us the majority leader of the 10th Senate, Okpayemi Bamidele, has admitted that the $460,000 that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu forfeited to the United States were process or were proceeds from illicit drugs and money laundry. Bamidele appeared before the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal Wednesday as witness of Tinubu against Peter Obi, and he admitted this while he was being cross-examined by Obi's lawyers. The senator, however, insists that in 1993 for feature was a civil proceeding and not a criminal case as Tinubu was never indicted, charged or convicted for criminal offenses in the United States. By the way, Tinubu and Shetima had proposed to call 99 or 39 witnesses but they've closed their defense just with this chief um, witness that was in court yesterday. Reacting to this on the space of social media is Abe who says that has never been in dispute the bone of contention is about the nature of the case that is is it a civil or criminal case civil or criminal for feature was he convicted of a crime is a civil indictment same as criminal conviction these are the germane issues but responding to him is Aki who says for feature is a punishment for a crime whether it is civil or criminal Emmanuel says, my pain is that Tinubu did not need to run for presidency at all. He could have just played his godfatherism and maybe, and maybe he will continue to be relevant. Also reacting to this is this user who says, at this point, Labour Party lawyers should be worried about possible favorable ruling with loopholes that Tinubu and APC will rely on to attack the tribunal judgment as Supreme Court. Their grand plan is the Supreme Court. And a former Minister of State for Labour and Employment, Festus Keyamo, says that the European Union Election Observation Mission final report on the 2023 election is a reflection of a one-sided narrative. The EU had, in page 92 of its report, listed Keyamo and Femi Fani Kayode as top fake news peddlers in the general election of 2023. It says Keyamo promoted information published by a uh, suspicious website accusing the candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Ruby, of bribery. But in reaction, Keyamo stresses that the EU was only to monitor the polls and that gives them no right whatsoever to investigate claims made by candidates against one another. Well, he wrote something really long on the social media, on Twitter precisely, and then this is is just um, thirdly as you would see their stories above but he says they said i retweeted a story by a suspicious website 
prey what makes a website suspicious they did not elaborate how can foreigners come into a country and declare a local news website as suspicious without more and just walk away what arrogance and then it says, overall, the EU report is nothing but a reflection of a one-sided narrative. And I congratulate the opposition on working closely with the EU and cutting away the all-important prize of the EU final report. Munachi so responding to him as he posted this. He says, I don't think it's in your purview to tell the EU what to observe and what not to observe. What you people took or when you people took their money, you never complained. Hence, they have the right to report their observations if your government had concluded conducted free and fair election we won't be here for Akin Esquire, it says, when you and your twin brother, FFK, write long episodes to defend falsehood and whitewash the EU report, it only points in one direction. You are chilled to the bone marrow. Once again, congratulations to the both of you for making it to the top of the list as fake news merchant. Real. For Victor, he says, sir, thank you for your submission. You are doing an excellent job by providing the best possible information to the public on this matter. These swarms of people who are trying to discredit you are a bunch of losers. But for Khan Judiciary, tweeting at Samuel, he says, a legal luminary and great senior advocate of Nigeria of that time, please, without further expression of anger and frustration, sue the EU observers immediately, put it to them that their report contains technical glitches against you. Is he really going to do that now? Well, let's see.